Welcome to another episode of On The Trail. My name is Mel Wade with Evo Manufacturing. We're here at the Cinders, just outside of Flagstaff, Arizona. When you think of Arizona, you think of hot, dry, saguaro cactuses, dry desert. We're up at 7,000 feet at Flagstaff, Arizona. This is really close to the Grand Canyon. Sedona is right down to the south of us. This is the gateway to all of it. Hey, today we have Harley Wade, uh, my daughter, and from Off Revolution, and we have Randy Wilcox with Driving Line. Randy, have you ever been out here before? Um, I've actually never been to the Flagstaff area for Wheeling. Uh, being growing up in Southern California, I spent a lot of time out at Glamis, Oxia Wells area, where true sand dunes. Yeah. Um, this stuff here today is definitely a lot different. Yeah, so it's volcanic rock, and there's big old hills. So you, have that same uh, kind of feel like Oldsmobile in, in Glamis, but a little bit different. A little bit different. Yeah. So looking forward to seeing what the day presents. Cool. Harley, I've taken you here a few years ago. Yeah. You weren't driving then, now you're gonna be driving. So what are you looking forward to doing? Really looking forward to getting up on some of the hills and seeing if I have enough power to go up them. So today we're at the Cinders OHV area right outside of Flagstaff, Arizona. This is a beautiful area, great for families. You have graded roads, so you can bring your motorhome out here or your, your camp trailer, whatever you got, and go camping for the weekend. But as soon as you drive off the road, since it is an OHV area, you gotta really be careful. You get some of the soft stuff, and there's some big dunes out here. This is, when I say soft, it's like pea-sized volcanic rock ground up. It's not, nothing like I've ever seen before. It's pretty cool. That's where we get all this black area out here. But uh, we should have a great time. The cinders, if you haven't been here, it's a must stop. Now let's talk about the cool stuff, what we're driving. That's, that's what I'm into. What are you driving today? Uh, today I brought out the yellow JK you see behind me. We're sitting on 40 inch needle trail grapplers. Yep. We got Evo Manufacturing long arm coilover kit on that thing. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how that truck drives today. Awesome, should be great out here. We should have a lot of fun. So Harley, what are you driving? I have my 2018 JL Rubicon and it drives amazing. It has 37 inch needle trail grapplers with KMCs and it has our Evo long arm coilover kit. And today I brought out a 2021 Jeep Gladiator, but it has a diesel. So I'm really looking forward to driving a diesel on these big hills. we a 42 inch Nitto uh, trail grappler on a 20 inch KMC wheel with our Evo coilover kit. Looking forward to it. So today, since we're in an OHV area, we have lots of room, lots of stuff to go see and do. We're gonna cover three topics though. We wanna cover some suspension setups. So we're gonna be going faster than rock crawling. So what you ideally wanna go for going fast. Then we're gonna cover some of the hill climbs. There's some massive hills out here. You can get into trouble quick. So we'll show you what you don't wanna do or what you wanna do. Then after that, we're gonna play around, get us stuck and do some recovery, some safe recovery, some easy quick pips. So you guys ready to do this? Dude, I'm ready, let's go. Let's go, let's, let's go, go do it. Go. Cool. Okay, we're gonna talk about some basic suspensions and, and there's not just one suspension for, for a person. So it really depends on what you're looking to go do. We're gonna talk a little bit about going fast out here. This is kind of like open desert, a little bit of chop. So when you're building a vehicle for that, you wanna have more up travel. When I'm talking about up travel, I'm talking about the axle or the A-arm before it bottoms out on the bump stop. So you wanna have up travel. If you only have two inches of up travel, you hit a bump that's two inches, you're gonna bottom out, you're gonna feel a jar. So you wanna have enough, sh enough space that the shock can control that bounce. It's less jarring to the customer. A lot of people are really concerned about LCG. That's a big buzzword in the industry. Low center of gravity, low center of gravity. That's great for rock crawling. It's great for some stuff. You got the big rooftop tent, you need, you're, you're, you're not stable. With low center of gravity, we usually lose up travel, which makes it harsher on this kind of environment. Luckily, with a coilover setup, you're allowed to adjust ride height, so you can get to both, both worlds within about an hour in your garage to be able to adjust it up, have more ride height, get more up travel if you want to go faster out in the deserts uh, and do some other stuff, or you want to lower it down for that LCG. So this is our two inch uh, hydraulic bump stop. This is actually a shock inside of here, and then it hits against the bottom bump stop here. So we're running about four inches of up travel before we hit the bump stop, and then two more. So we're sitting at six inches of up travel. This allows her to be able to hit a big bump and use all of our shock without hitting a bump stop. Also want to take a chance to talk about tire sizes. The bigger the tire, the bigger tire rolls over all the little rough obstacles. The smaller tires tires, if you have a bump that's this big, it's taking up half the tire. You feel it, your suspension works harder. 
That's why the old wagon trains had 54 inch tall wagon wheels. It was to roll over the obstacles to overland. So that's what we're talking about. Right now you can see the tire difference. This is a 37 versus a 42. So this vehicle with a 42 can have a little bit lesser of suspension, but there's a cost to play with that. When you start running with a big, big tire like this one, we want to recommend you changing axles and everything else out so the cost gets really expensive. So for the weekend warrior on the Jeeps, it tends to be the 37 seems to be the proper size for it. So the beautiful things about the OHV area is, especially on a weekday like today, there's nobody out here. So this is a time, it's the perfect time if you have time to do it. Take that time, learn your vehicle. We're gonna go do a couple high speed passes. We're gonna see some whoops. We'll get Harley in here driving and uh, see how the vehicle feels. Hold the flat, keep going. Keep going, hold the flat, hold the flat. Keep going, you got it. You got it, keep going, hold the flat, keep going, keep going. So we just finished up going fast out here in the lower area, some little minor whoop de doos How'd you like, we hit speeds about 75 miles an hour. How'd you like it? It was really fun, but the steering kind of started to wonder a little bit. So I was trying to correct it. And you gotta be careful with that because if you correct it too much, you're gonna end up flopping over a little bit. And the suspension was able to take it up. And uh, again, we had pre-ran beforehand. So we knew there wasn't any big, big ditches to hurt us. So we knew everything, everything out here where we chose to go we can just hold it flat and have a good time. So we're gonna finish up here, we just ate some lunch, and then now we're gonna hit up and find some dunes, some bigger hills. I'm ready to climb some stuff. Are you gonna climb like the biggest one you see, or? I'm gonna climb the second, that's the third okay, biggest gotcha. one that I see. Yeah, so out here, it's the equalizer. So you're like, yeah, I wanna do some big stuff. And then you look and go, oh, I don't know. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's part of this play area. Don't get intimidated, don't get bullied into doing stuff. You really don't have to. Enjoy yourself, this is off-roading, that's why we're out here by ourselves to do this stuff. Do what you want to do, have a good time, be safe, have fun, make memories. Go, let's go. Okay, now we're in the area where the big dunes or big hills are. So this is all big and loose stuff behind us. There, it could go super steep. You want to play it to where you're safe and have a good time. We're about coming out here, enjoying our drive, enjoying our day and driving home. So do, do what you feel comfortable doing. What do you feel about those big hills? You know, I'm looking behind me and I see you can get about halfway up and then you got to veer to the left or the right. So I'm thinking maybe that's not my path today. Yeah. But some of these other options where we have a straight shot up to a plateau seems pretty cool. Cool. What do you think about it, Harley? You know, having coilover kits, you have a lot of travel. So you kind of get top heavy with these JKs and JLs. So I rather keep it to where there's no off camber and just straight up a hill. And if you have to back down, you can back right up. Yeah, so you don't want to be off camber and have a lot of wheel trouble because you have body roll. So I would like horsepower. I'd like to have my buggy here with, with you know, 800 horsepower and be able to boogie up and throw some rooster tails and wheelies and everything else. But we're in Jeeps today. We'll pick a line and let everybody be safe. When you're approaching a hill and you don't know what's on the other side, number one is, can you make it? When you make it and you get to the top, what's on the other side? That's something to think about, you know, the uh, novice just might be gung-ho and want to go for stuff. If you want to be doing it for a long time, you want to pay attention where you're at. So right now we're going to take on the conservative side. These are all pretty steep hills. We're going to take more of a Jeep route and get to the top of this hill so we can kind of scout out what's on the other side of the hills. There's pretty good traction out here actually. So we're in some four-wheel drive kind of cruising. So we're going to meander through here and then get this last hill climb, see what's on the other side. How you guys doing back there? Slow and steady. I'm just holding it in two and just kind of keeping my momentum the same. Perfect. It's perfectly flat up here. It looks really good. Uh, it's like a graded road up there, pretty cool. You guys gonna see you right behind us? Yeah, it's gorgeous. I'm pretty stoked. 
I mean, I'm actually pretty impressed with uh, the level of traction. I, I wasn't really too sure what to expect. I kind of alluded to that earlier, but with this kind of like more rock-like material as opposed to sand, it seems like the, the Jeeps just kind of bite into it, kind of crawl up. Pretty incredible stuff. Right now what we're gonna do is, since this is the OHV area, there's plenty of room to actually spread out. There's not a whole bunch of people here. So it's time to kind of go back to the basics and let's talk about getting stuck. Uh, how can we recover? Let's uh, learn when there's not a whole bunch of people waiting on you or anything like that. So have you ever been stuck before, Harley? Multiple times, but most of them I've been able to get out. Cool, how about you, you've been stuck? Uh, I've been stuck more times than I care to count. Cool, yeah. and I get stuck just looking at dirt. I'm stuck everywhere, so we've, pulled out semi trucks and everything else. Just I just get stuck. So right now we're gonna showcase it's kind of coming up, typical front axle not working or something like that, and then taking it down two wheel drive and somebody helping with a, with a snatch strap or a regular strap and just giving a little tug how little it takes to actually get somebody out. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna get, get Harley to go ahead and put it in two wheel drive. This is really loose stuff right here, so it doesn't take much. It's one of those things where as soon as the vehicle starts to dig and you're not, and you're not going with momentum, you wanna just kinda of stop and back out of it. For this application, of course, we could bury her and she could probably back up down the hill, but we're gonna play the scenario where we have to get up over this ridge to get out, out of here. This is typical. I uh, keep trying, 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 and we actually buried it to the diff. So right now the, the differential, the center diff, is hanging up. The tires are a little, literally floating there in, in, in midair. So this, there's no traction going on right now. Uh, if you put it in four-wheel drive, we can see what happens uh, with no lockers. Let's just do no lockers, four-wheel drive, and see if she can actually get out of it like that. Uh, if not, this is where we're gonna be putting a snatch strap in. We wanna showcase what a regular four-wheel four drive is. This is a Rubicon, it comes equipped with two lockers. Most don't have that. So this is just a four-wheel drive vehicle that let's just say she forgot she was in two-wheel drive, and now we're gonna put it in four-wheel drive. Let's see what happens. Wheel, front wheels, driver, passenger, okay, there you go, stop you're gonna to wanna to try to get out of your hole. So you're gonna turn hard one way or the other and give it a little bit of bump and then uh, some, some throttle also. Keep going, there you go. A little less, there you go, it's crawling, crawling. You're up on top, keep it going. So right now that, that simulator there's working perfect. If you go any more, you're gonna dig a hole. So that's where throttle control, if she was just stomp it with big horsepower, it would literally just dig a hole, you're stuck again. So we actually slowed the wheel speed down. This has enough traction where she's actually kind of crawling out of the hole. These open OHP areas are a neat spot to be able to take over to some of the basics and learn some basic driving technique. Okay, so we're gonna back it back down in here again and I get her back in the holes, two wheel drive, bury it, and this will be more of a traditional breakdown scenario where we're trying to get out. I'll back the gladiator down and we'll hook up a snap strap to it. Actually, I don't have a snap strap. This is an actual strap. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove all tension there is and then give her a tug at the same time. That is a That's not a good sign. So like, when you're like that, that's when you're gonna get a shovel out and you are digging. You're high centered on your diff, so. Um, yeah, let's stop it, put it, put it fire. <laughs> You're gonna apply a little bit of power. I'm gonna have to give you a little bit of a jerk to get the high centered axle off, and then we're gonna keep going. So we got out. So it was a couple of, couple of bumps to get out. 
again, something we're practicing right here. Nobody's rushing us, it's kind of cool. You feel pretty off camber and helpless in the car that's broken. And temperatures rise, or you just kind of get frustrated. So uh, even, even here, huh? it just doesn't feel good being on the hook, huh? No, <laughs> so stuff breaks, man. Don't you know, don't worry about it. Let's get out and let's go do some more stuff. I already know how being stuck feels. That's why when we come out, we're gonna make sure everything works and nothing's gonna break. So we don't have to deal with this on a daily basis. What a great day, end of day. We're up here on top of a cinder right now. Got a little bit of wind, got a beautiful view. What an awesome area. If you haven't been out here, we got to go slow, fast. We did some suspension testing. We hit some hill climbs and we even got stuck and tried some extractions. How'd you enjoy the day? Uh, for me, this place is awesome. I, this terrain is like nothing that I've ever really wheeled on before. Um, really inspires a lot of confidence too. I'm, I'm not a big hill climb guy. It's not my thing to do. I don't like those slushy, sandy hills yeah. that you usually get, but being here and being able to just kind of focus and pay attention and like kind of improve upon your skills was just rad for me. Great spot for that, huh? Yeah. Harley, how'd you like it? You know, we were really worried in the beginning that we weren't gonna have enough traction to get up some of the hills, but it turned out that we had a lot more traction than we did yeah. in Glamis or anywhere else. We did. And it's just amazing up here. Cool, how'd you like being on the strap this time? It got under your skin a little bit, but it's okay. We got out and now we're up on top of a cinder. Cool areas like this, the OHV areas where you can practice, feel, you know, learn, uh, get out of your elements, and then it's not really heavily traveled, so you can you kind of go on your own pace. But thank you guys, we really appreciate it. Thank you, Nitto Tires. Thank you, Driving Line. And thank you guys out there on YouTube. Please hit like, subscribe. We want to hear your comments. And until next time, we'll see you on the trail.